Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we are going to discuss a question that I get all the time. And I thought about it and I said, you know what, it's time to do a video on this because hopefully it will make sense to all of you who are wondering this. And that is, why do stepper motors get so hot? Now, there's a lot of explanations online. It really delves into how deep down the rabbit hole you want to go, but I'm going to break it down into layman's terms where I feel many of you will understand this. It's very, very simple. First of all, voltage equivalates with a CNC controller to speed, meaning speed of your motors. So if we run 48 volts, which is what we've got in this system right here, this 600 ounce motor is going to get very hot because we're using overdrive ration. For those of you not familiar with overdrive ration, it's where you're actually overpowering a stepper motor from its rated voltage uh, amplified uh, by up to 25 times the voltage that it's rated to. And the reason we say up to 25 times is because if you go higher than that, you risk potentially damaging the motor because of excess heat. The byproduct of voltage is heat. You'll get more speed, but then you're, you have to dissipate more heat. Now, stepper motors are made out of iron, and that's why they're so heavy. And what you'll notice is when you run your motors, the higher the voltage of the power supply you're running, a stepper motor is going to get very hot. Now it gets hot not just because of the voltage, but also because unlike a regular AC or DC type motor where it's either on or it's off, a stepper motor is always on because the coils are always charged to give you holding torque. So right now the system's of course not plugged in, but if it was plugged in, you would notice that if you turn on the system, you hear a click or a slight charge, so to speak, and what you're actually hearing is the motor providing holding torque. Now, our CNC robots, when we go into production, we want that holding torque so that naturally we don't worry about bumping into the chassis and it moving or it actually drifting on whatever axis it be, X, Y, Z, A, so on and so forth. The main thing to be concerned about is if you're using a G540 system, and you can see it installed right here, is going to be your current set resistor. Now this current set resistor, you can see it's installed on my solderless connector, and I left it out of its shell so you can see exactly how this goes. The reason you want a current set resistor is it allows the G540 to enter its current idle reduction mode. And what that simply means is that when the gecko signifies that it is no longer in motion, meaning your motors are in holding torque position, they're not moving, they're just providing torque so that the axis is stabilized, it will reduce its output amperage 70% of what it normally produces, which is up to three and a half amps, and by using the current set resistor, it enables the drive to do this, allowing the motors to run a little cooler. Once again, stepper motors will get very hot because they are always charged. The coils are always active. The motor in there for is always on. So keep that in mind. And how hot can a stepper get? Because I get this question all the time. Steppers can literally get as hot enough to cook eggs on YouTube. There's a video that reflects that. And it's a fact. They can. Remember, the dissipation of the heat of the motor is through the actual iron uh, shell, the actual chassis of it. So when you think about it, steppers are designed to dissipate heat through their shell. Now, I've seen guys do a couple different things to anticipate dissipating more heat. I've seen heat sinks on them. You've seen all kinds of different apparatuses. I get asked all the time, do you think I should put a back plate on it? Do you think I should mount my connectors to it? No. I would not mount anything that is heat sensitive to your motor for that reason. Because if you do that, you risk possible damage due to the fact that these motors get cycled very hot. They go hot, they get cooler, then they get hot again. It's just not best practice. You're much better off mounting your connectors to your chassis format or again to uh, a different particular area on your cable chain or somewhere out of the way that it will not be tampered with when the axis is in motion. Okay. 
but overall this is why stepper motors get so hot okay is that you understand these motors unlike regular motors are always on and they're on for that reason to provide your robot the stability it needs we don't want axis shifting in motion we want everything to be stable and therefore when she's not spinning fore and aft it is in a holding position and that's why this motor is always on the next thing i want to cover why do my motors make a hissing noise or they buzz well that's a very good question that's called stepper sing and that's simply due to the fact that once again the stepper from the micro stepping drive inside the g540 or whatever drive you're using is charging the stepper and therefore steppers may get a charge that is audible you'll hear like a hiss or a slight buzz this is totally normal. For some reason, some guys get paranoid and they think this is, you know, a big issue. It's not. It's something that is totally normal. You'll look it up, you'll find it's perfectly normal. It's the coils being charged and sometimes also it can be a, uh, a step configuration where the motor's in a slight configuration between steps. You might even hear it slightly louder between steps because again, with uh, gecko drives we have morphing so that morphing feature can leave the motor in between a certain step and it may be louder at a certain point than another point I've gotten questions on you know why does one motor seem to be a little louder than another everything is fine but I'm just wondering about this well now you understand it okay drives all act differently and you know if you use a lead chime drive you may have motors that are quieter if you use a gecko drive you may have motors that are quieter it just depends on what drive you're using however the process, the functionality are all the same. Motors work or they don't work. There really isn't a lot of in between with them and that's what makes them such a simple unit uh, as far as troubleshooting in your system. That's why, you know, 98% of the time when you're troubleshooting a motor, you unplug it, you switch axis, you can test it and very quickly find out is it your motor causing the issue when you check test it versus another motor that you know works very very quick process but again for all those guys out there concerned about how hot a stepper gets totally normal for the stepper to get hotter than you can touch totally normal for the stepper to get you know in excess of 150 degrees that's usually normal the other thing I'm going to say is this this is why I speak about always using your system in a climate controlled environment because steppers get hot. If they get hot, imagine what happens when this enclosure has its lid on and you have the heat from the G540, which it cannot exceed 150 degrees, which of course we have our integrated cooling system, but then you also have the ambient temperature hot air coming out of the power supply. So if you have the enclosure's lid on, you're encasing all that. Even if you do have the fan going in the breathing holes, if your ambient temperature is very hot, you're essentially just blowing hot air in, in which case that just is what it is. So we want to make sure you always have the proper cooling where it needs to be. It's essential that it's where it needs to be, and that means that making sure your environment is at the proper temperature. And again, for the cost of a window AC unit, it's very, very cheap to do. And I don't see any benefit in any way for anybody sweating over their equipment. There is nothing, there's nothing to gain with that. You know, it's, you're, you're making your, your life a lot more miserable than working with the equipment the way it should because these are robotic controllers and they're still electronic and they need to be in a climate controlled environment. So again, guys, I hope I've covered a lot of the questions that I get asked on a general basis. These are kind of basic questions, but with the system in front of me, with this actually now showing uh, exactly what we're talking about, where I talk about all the time, you know, the motors, what they're made out of, and how they perform, this really covers everything in detail, and I hope I've covered some of the most general questions for you guys that are novice, just getting involved with the genre, and, you know, you're panicked, and that's good to be panicked, but... Um, sometimes it's it's overdone and again I'm hoping I'm putting some of your fears to bed so again if you guys have questions comments quotes message me direct at storm2313 at gmail.com you can also message me through my e-dealer direct store on eBay uh, you'll see contact information beginning of the video and at the end I thank you all for your support take care